it is what it is being a public figure out here. What's going on with you, though, bro? Hey, you know, just trying to keep my head above one and stay away from the... Uh, yeah, do me a favor. Don't say that. I'm going to have to bleep that out. Just call it call it the outbreak, man. Call, call it the outbreak because YouTube is... my The podcast part of it is not a problem, but YouTube have some serious issues with, with that word right now. So they, they, uh, they demonet, they demonetizing and, and they, they, uh, they killing channels and all that good shit, man. So yeah, whatever you do, try to, try to keep that word. From, you know what I'm saying? So just say the outbreak. The outbreak. Okay. Gotcha. The outbreak. The outbreak 2020. What's going on, guys? Lockout men here in the truck once again with another podcast interview. My man from the Zello channel. That's where I met this guy from. Good guy. Flatbedder. You know what I'm saying? He's been rocking out for a long time. Let me bring in to the show my man, Captain Peanut. What's going on, man? Hey, it, it is what it is. What can I say? It is what it is, man. What's, how, how's this? How, how's this outbreak? Uh, is 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 demolishing your life right now, man? Being a flatbedder. Well, one of our main contracts. Um, I spoke with one gentleman yesterday, and um, they have a military contract. So he says they will not shut down because of the military. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they need they need that. They need that, but uh, yeah. other than that, uh, other than that, any 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 anything else that's uh disrupting life other than other than the well, stuff that we hear in every day, you know. Well, you know, with the other customers, the same company, they just got different divisions and mm-hmm. other parts of the company is talk about shutting down. So, one company, three or four different divisions so, you know, um, I'm just waiting to see what dispatch says tomorrow morning or Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning, I guess, when they have their little powwow, who you, they going to allow to continue to run and who they going to send home. You, you're you not a company driver, are you? you you're you owner-operator. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a lease purchase driver. Oh, you, you're a lease purchase driver. So I'm, I'm assuming if they're going to start you know, doing it that way, they're going to, they're going to probably send some of their company drivers home first and then, and then let the lease and owner operators rock out, or are they going to focus on their company drivers? And, I think they're going to split it right down the middle. Oh, okay. That's, that's what's up. That's a, the company needs to make some money. So the company will have some company drivers on. And I think what they might do is they might rotate Lease operators in and out. Oh, okay, okay. So this way, everybody doesn't go without. But because see, every week it takes uh, about twenty two hundred dollars before I see a penny. So if I'm down for a week, I'm twenty two hundred in the hole. So if you're down for two weeks, that's forty four hundred dollars that you're in the hole. Okay, yeah, that's that's what's up right there, man. That's that's crazy. I think I think this outbreak is putting a, putting more of a hurting on on owner ops and lease ops more so than than the company drivers. I'm gonna I'm company, gonna drop something on you that you probably have not heard yet. So this will be the first. Okay. What's up? What's up? A friend of mine was in a truck stop. Mm-hmm. A lady just got out of an RV and she was on the phone with a friend of hers. And mm-hmm. says, we're at one of those truck stops where those truck mm-hmm. drivers are at. Mm-hmm. They're making all this pandemic money off of the situation. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, my friend was the one that was there. I wasn't there. But I wish I would have been because the first thing is, what money are we making because... It costs me twenty two hundred dollars every week to work. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm sitting here scratching my head on that comment. Like, you're here at the truck stop 
where all these truckers is making this pandemic money. Yeah. But on the flips, on the flip side of that, you you must not been watching the news, lady, because there's a lot of truckers at truck stops that haven't been moving in a while. Exactly. Some of them been some of them been sitting for two, three, four, five days. So are you sure you're at the right truck stop? And where does she get off? Where where does she get off? Uh, coming out with that comment, man. Right? Well, see, nine out of ten people with money, you know, look down on other people. As always, you, you ain't never lied about that. Never so, lied about that. First thing is, you know, year before last, I made a little bit over a hundred and eighty thousand. This past year, I did one fifty three. Oh, okay, give you a bomb drop for that, bro. You put all you so, put all that money in the bank. All, all that money is in the bank, right? Uh, well, it's in it's in places. Let's just put it that way. It's in places. Oh, uh, it's <laughs> it's in places. Okay, that's what's up. At least at least you 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 good on how you uh, negotiate where your money goes. A yeah. lot of a lot of these young cats out here don't don't know how to do that. You know, they don't no. know how to get they don't know how to get one, two, or three bank accounts and. Have one bank account for the pri- uh, for the private, one bank account for the for for the business, and another bank account strictly for the savings. They they don't know how to do all that stuff. No, you know, see, there's there's so many different conversations we can have here. It's not even funny. Um, but yeah, but it's in different places. And um, with this lady, when she made this comment. If she would have been in front of the right person, she oh, yeah. would have she would have got, she would've got an ear. Got yeah. An ear she would have got a, Yeah, she would have got an earful. Definitely. Okay, uh, because she there's a lot of people out here that are dry van runners, and uh, and I, you know, we give each other hard times dry van and flatbedders and reefers and car haulers. Yeah, we we tend to all, yeah we we we, we, we do that. This yeah. is our lane. This is our lane. We can do that to each other. Not not you four wheeler. Yeah. Not you the not you the four wheeler that veered me off the road yesterday and and smacked my and smacked my passenger mirror off. Not exactly. you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, not not, yeah. not not you. But see, they don't understand. There's men and women out here that are trying to do the best they can. And then coming home under the situation, hundred dollars a week. Mm-hmm. Okay, the and just because the country is going through something, you might have somebody here who's don't even have enough money to even buy a meal to eat tonight. Speaking of speaking of meals, man, I I just got a text message. They says uh, during this epidemic, this uh breakout, this uh outbreak uh texas roadhouse stepped yep. up to the plate for us truckers yes they, they said did. that uh they said that yo come roll up in our parking lot make your also, make your order make your order and we'll bring it out to you with silverware in a bun there are certain cities that if you're in the city limits the police department will come and bring you food or will take you to the restaurant if you're inside their city limits. That's what's up, man. At least, at least some of the, you know, at least some of the good Samaritans and some of the, some of the, you know, law enforcement and and some of the restaurants is stepping up because they know that we, you know, while everybody else is at home, you know, whatever circumstances there is, you know, and I I know the minimum wage people is getting hit the hardest, but. We still need to be out here. Yeah, what? Well, Would for we still need to be need to be out here, man. I just went to McDonald's, like like a couple of McDonald's. Uh, one McDonald's, I told them to give me my money back because I didn't like the way the service was. And another McDonald's, man, another McDonald's had like uh they had like lines, man. Hold on, right quick. Bringing, I'm 
bringing that. Well, there's a Burger King. There's a Burger King in Kingsport, Tennessee. Young lady who's manager over there, Diane Clayton. Mm-hmm. If any trucks are in that area, she is having her employees bring food out to truck drivers. Well, right now I just I just scrolled up to where where I was, which McDonald's I was at, and uh, and this line right here, they they got literally they got like an outside box line right there that you have to first you had to step be out of it, and then when you go to pay, that's when you step into it. I mean, when I went up there, like when it was my turn, the the um cashier literally like when I stepped up in there to pay for my food and everything she stepped back from the cashier <laughs> she stepped back from the cashier and uh and yeah it's it's getting serious, it's getting yeah. serious. so, so it's, it's that serious. what you know that this thing is really and truly out of hand and that lady made a truck stop all these truck stop uh, you break you breaking up there peanut hello that lady who made that comment that she's at truck stop well these truck drivers are making this money really and truly need a, a life lesson and an economic <laughs> lesson my guy says she needs a life lesson. <laughs> That's what's up. All right, Captain Peanut, man, introduce yourself to my uh, listeners right quick. Uh, let them know where you uh, come from, bro. Hey, it's Captain Peanut out of a um, little town called Sanford, Florida, um, better, better known as uh, just, just north part of Orlando, Florida. Um, been trucking for almost 20 years now. Um, started out car hauling, jumped into the reefer world, jumped out of it, jumped into the dry box world, got out of it, went back to the reefer world, left there and got into flat bedding. And that's where I found my niche at. You found your niche in flat bedding, but you say you started it, uh, oh. with car hauling. Now, now I'm glad I got, I'm, I'm glad I got somebody or in the line because you know a lot of people I talked to and I mean talked to so far, you know they did drive in, they did flatbed, they you know I had a fifty I had a fifty year old female flatbedder, a lot of drive in drivers and you know a couple of reefer drivers, but I never had a car hauler. D- t- touch touch on touch on your experience with car hauling right quick. If the 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 ha- the the car hauling game has changed a little bit over the years. Um, we used to chain down all the cars. Here in the last two, three years, they stopped chaining them down, and they're now using straps. Um, now you say, now you say chain, and I, I've seen like some old school drivers that use chains. Yeah, uh, they 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 changed it up to, for the for the safety of the car, so they won't get damaged or well, it's or supposed to be more you, safety. Yeah, if that that strap is should be a little bit more secure than the chain. But mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, I I'm I'm a flat better, and right now I have a thirty one thousand pound coil, and that is chained down to my truck. That 31,000 pound coil is probably equivalent to about five cars. Okay. And if chains will hold a coil, especially a suicide coil from rolling, um, but yet DOT wants straps to hold five cars. All right. I'm okay. I'm sorry. What is a suicide coil? Whenever you see a coil on the back of a flatbed and the the coil, you can see the the outer shape of the coil, or you can see the coil either way. 
and it will roll towards the cab of the truck or roll off the back end of the trailer, that is called suicide. It, okay. it is loaded. Some people call it shotgun. Some people call it homicide. It will roll off the side of the trailer. You'll either kill someone on either side of your truck. Damn and the God. last, the last type of coils are loaded eye to the sky, and they're usually on skids. Okay, 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 okay. That's what's up. So, so with car hauling, man, um, how do you guys? I, you know, I, I was always fascinated with car hauling. How do you guys load the cars? And get out of the cars. <laughs> I see so you know how they how they load the cars. They be you know the way they load it. They be up on that top rack and be up over the over the over the tractor and you know like that. But y'all don't have no y'all don't have no room to get out of the car. Like how how, how do y'all how do y'all load the cars, man? You keep your you keep one hand on that car at all times, and there's always uh-huh. something to grip and hold on to. Um, the other thing is if they're in the belly of the truck you're usually calling in and out of a window so you do not see big people hauling cars (laughs) (laughs) no I you you have exactly right I I I have not I have yet to see the average trucker car hauling I, I usually see like like mid-sized guys around my size, you know, sits one at about two, at about two fifty, two city. But usually, there's a lot of there, there, there's a lot of a lot of guys that are skinnier, about about two hundred, about two hundred, two twenty, about a buck fifty. Yeah, yeah I, I don't see, I don't see no three hundred plus uh, <laughs> car haulers out there. No, no, they they do not exist. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say they don't exist, but they um, they might be the ones that you see doing the hot shot car hauling. So, so car hauling, man, you say hold on to one. You you guys, are you you know being that you driving the cars in all sorts of uh, conditions, uh, rain, sleet, snow gravel that comes up off the ground all that good stuff debris that's coming from other trucks are y'all responsible for any damages to the to the cars every square inch of that car needs to be documented scratches dings dirt because someone will have some dirt on a car and oh that's a scratch right there you owe me a paint job so you have to document every square inch of that vehicle because you know um they will file a claim in a heartbeat and is that is is that your like again that is that your responsibility would they and how and if it is your responsibility and you guys get dinged for it what what do they do what do they do just take it out your paycheck Oh, well, you end up paying or your, uh, they file a claim with your insurance. Your insurance. <laughs> Hold on. I think I got income. Okay. Okay, maybe not. Okay, so you say your insurance, like your personal insurance or? Yeah. Your, your liability. Wait, wait, you wait. It's this for, is this for the for even if you work for the company, you you have to have liability well, insurance. If, on you, your, if on you work for a company, depending on the company, the companies that I work for, the owners will just take it out of your check, and they don't wait and see how much it is, and then take it out. They just grab it the first week. Hey, I had a damage claim on Sunday. I'm supposed to get paid on Tuesday. They're pulling that money out Sunday. Wow. Yo, Dash. Yeah. Is that oh, you? Yes. Oh, sorry. Have a. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Uh, there's not a North place. 
No, it's um, North Pace. North um, Hall Road, 300 North Hall Road. <laughs> From Panda Spread. Yeah. Well, I saw you over there, and I thought, where does he to be yet? I am so sorry. Hey, I'll give you one second. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. I'm back. Uh, lock out. So who's that in the background? Just then? That was, yeah. that, who was, who was that, that in the was background? Door, oh, that yeah, was DoorDad? That, door, that was for, that was for you? That, that was for you? Oh, I think I lost you. Uh-oh. I think I lost you. Yep, there you go. Hold on. Oh, hold on right quick. Hold on, I think I think I lost you. I gotta I gotta bring you back. I gotta bring you back. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello, hello? Oh, okay. I think. Hold on, right quick, y'all. Hold on. Technical difficulties. Right now. Right now. Technical difficulties. Trying to bring him back. Hey, like uh, there you, there you go. We we back, we back. Yeah, we're back. Okay, okay. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of lost you there for a minute. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. so that that was DoorDash for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, that's okay. My panda. Uh, that's my panda for tonight. Oh, uh, that's oh. You got you some uh some panda. Where where you at, bro? Like where you at right now? I am at. Alcoa, um, Alcoa, Tennessee. Oh, okay. I I just left up. I, I just left up out of all of that. Where you Where you heading to? And what load you got right now? I have that one thirty one thousand pound coil going to Texarkana, Texas. Oh, so you heading down to Texas? Let me let, let me give you. Hold on, right quick, man. I, I you know when people say Texas, I I got to give. I gotta give the Texas drop. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all my Texas. Uh shout out to all my Texas people down there, you know what I'm saying? You know that support the lockout men channel. I really do appreciate that. All right, man. So um so back to this car hauling thing, man. How how long you been how long you been doing car hauling? I did car hauling for about two years, three years. Um I got okay. away from it. I went back to it, got away from it, um, went back to it. Last time I left it, I said I'm done because I had gained some weight and crawling in and out of those windows was just getting a little, little harder. But wait a minute. Wait, bro, bro. I'm, wait, I'm about to play devil's advocate with you right quick, man. Uh-huh. How the hell you gain weight doing car hauling? No, it's when okay. I left car hauling. I went to dry van and reef world and I gained some weight. Oh, okay. Hold on right quick. Let me, let me acknowledge uh, a couple of people right quick. What's up y'all. Um, right now I'm in the podcast. I'm just showing you guys behind the scenes on, on my setup and everything. I got the green screen working right here, but right now I got my, I got my guy on the phone and uh, we chopping it up. So just just to give you a little a little look on uh, on what's going on with uh, with lockout man over here, you know what I'm saying? I just uh, brought you brought you guys in here just a little bit. I appreciate you guys watching and you know listening in. Unfortunately, you can't hear him because I got the headphones on. But trust and believe, I am talking and I see the comments that's coming through. Uh, I do want you guys to know that I'm on the phone with a car hauler and a flatbedder. So if you got questions in the midst of me talking to them, definitely come out with some questions. And I will, I will ask why he's on the phone. All right. So, 
Yeah, I got a, uh, I got, you know, I got my life uh, going through my phone right now. All right, so check this out, man. So, it, it, as I was saying, how could you gain some weight car hauling, bro? Better yet, well, how the hell I, can you gain some weight if you're a flat better? Because don't you, you don't you touch, uh, don't, don't, don't you work out with with the flat bed too? Not, not to get on you, man, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, you do some working out, but when you go to that reefer world hauling produce, you eat and sleep weird hours. Right, so when I got right. out of car hauling, I went to reefer world and the dry box world. Okay. And that's where the weight came in at. Okay, okay. That's, when that's the, sad, when okay. the, Economy takes a nosedive. Car hauling becomes a very lucrative business because a lot of people' cars get repo. They go to the auction, so you got a lot of cars being moved to the auction. Okay, okay, and and and, and, and business is good, I guess. Yeah. So, <laughs> right now with the way the I used to, car- I used to. I used to be I, I used to be uh one of them guys that actually go and get the car. You know, yeah. I when I was in the I was in the road service business and that yeah, that, that could be that that could be a stress upon itself. It, it, so you know when you guys go pick them up, we gotta come pick them up from you all or wherever they're stored at and yeah. And <laughs> it becomes a very lucrative business. Mm-hmm. Because there's so many cars that's got to be sold and and transported. Okay, okay. So, all right. So you say you spent like what two, uh, uh, two, three, two, three years in in uh, in car hauling. Yeah, I spent about three years in car hauling. Um, when I started in car hauling. Actually, I was out there for a little bit. I was actually on my probation period when um, we lost my my um, my mom. All right. So that's is this doing? Wait, this was about a couple of years ago, right? This was in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. There, oh, we lost my mom. Okay, I'm sorry. Rest in peace to your mother. When we had a run, my so-called trainer was a truck stop. I can't say that other word right now, but Mm H-O-E. And there was like, we got to stop it here. We got to go here. We got to stop here. We got to go here. We got to stop here. Mm -hmm. And the owner of the company had us basically loading in Florida, take these cars straight to New York, drop them off, then reload Friday in New York and come back down to Florida. That was the the, the whole setup. Unfortunately, because the person I was working with had to stop, go here, stop, go here, we missed our appointment on Friday. And that dealership was not reopened until Monday. And when I got the call Friday that mom, you know, at went home. Um, I was trying to figure out how to get home. The company I was I was new to the company. I hadn't even got my first check yet. So, um, just so happened to have a friend who was from New Jersey, and she just so happened to be in town that weekend. So, she gave me a ride back to Florida. She picked me up Saturday morning, and Saturday night we were back in Florida. So yeah, All right, that, so, that was my beginning to car hauling. Okay, okay. So, yeah, man. that's when you find out when it's time to run, you run. When it's time to shut it down, you shut it down. You do whatever you want to do on your shutdown time. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you've been in the business for you. You've been in the trucking business for, for twenty close to twenty years, man. What's, what's your experience out here? What, what's What's the good that you have seen and what's what's the worst you have seen? Some of the best 
money I've ever made in trucking has come from Flat Daddy. Um, I hope DOT is not listening. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> You say your old DOT is not listening, huh? When you can pick up a load, um, like on Tuesday, uh huh, and Wednesday evening, okay, you pick up a load in Florida Tuesday night in or Monday night, Monday night, Tuesday morning, you pick up a load, you deliver that load on Wednesday in Maine. You're back down in Florida Thursday evening, picking up another load to go back to Maine. Okay. 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 And when you run like that, yeah, your log books have to not, you know, they they just, you can't do it. A single driver um, cannot log it. That is a team run. That's what's up. But, That's what's up. But when you're a single driver and the owner of the company looks at you like, I don't know how you did it. It's like, well, you got a co-driver over there. That's not really a co-driver. She just keeps the coffee pot going. She makes you sandwiches. She does everything for you while you're going down the road. So this is the co-driver happens to be your wife, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> So she, so you guys, so how, how is it now? She's not a driver, right? She's, nope. she don't have her CDLs. How, she how is it? CDL, but she, how, every job I ever had, she's been there and she knows mm-hmm. everything about the company and what I do. Okay. So the comp, you know, the company, which is, which is Captain Peanut Enterprise, you know, it probably might be up under a different name. I'm just, I'm just throwing it yeah. out there. But, um, but your wife handles the the dispatches the calls the 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 paperwork and all that other stuff and leave and you just concentrate on the driving that is fucking awesome if i was to have a ever have a driver working for me my wife would know exactly what that person's duties are so a driver oh you can't do that. You're just an office person now. You don't know what you're talking about. She would get out here and she would throw chains. She would throw straps. She knows how to do reef work. She could do driving in. So an employee says, oh, well, you, there's no way you can run this. That That's impossible. She knows how to run the load and make it their own time. Exactly. Exactly. All right, so Peanut, man, 20 years in the game, man. Uh, I, I, know you've seen, I know you've seen a lot over the years. Um, take me back to a time where, where, where law books was king, man. How, how, was, it, was, how, how was it back then running, running laws? Outlaws. Outlaws. Two things. <laughs> One, there was no kink. Kink did not exist. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you got paid to do a job. And people know if they say, well, I need you to go from Florida to California. I need you to leave here Sunday night, and I need you back in Florida Friday evening. Mm-hmm. There's no way you can do it, and you make it happen. You got compensated for what you did. Okay. 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 Now, unfortunately, um, some other people have gotten into it and they don't know how you do it. So they use enhancements Mm -hmm. to get the job done. And they have an accident. They do too much enhancement and... You know, they find, heart they, attack they find, or whatever. They find themselves in a predicament that they can't get out of. Yeah. All right. So, um, unfortunately, oh. some people just don't know what dur- endurement is. You know, when a man who knows how to run doesn't run full steam, he does like a a, a jog. 
he controls his breathing, he can do something that the other person who doesn't know anything about running runs and wears himself out. And I, I got to crawl over him and sit corner and go to sleep. So yeah, and, and, and and them the ones that uh and them the ones that caused the accidents and all like that. Yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty years in the game, man. What? How how old are you right now, bro? You 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 in your fifty four. Fifty four, flat better, man. Doing the damn thing out there. Let me give you another bomb drop for that. Uh, all right. So twenty years in the game, you you seen the you seen how how laws are. You see how e laws are today. Twenty years back, man. Take take me back twenty years ago, where 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 trucking was a brotherhood, man, and and everybody man, helped and everybody helped uh, one another. It, it, what was life that was like exactly back? it. When you saw a truck on the shoulder, two or three other trucks would pull over, regardless if same company, different company. A truck on the shoulder of the road, somebody was pulling over. Now, oh, we got cell phones, we got coil combs, they got satellites. That person's okay. I'm keeping it in the wind. And that is companies doing what they did because if you stop, you're going to be late. If you stop, you can't stop. You got to keep going. Don't worry about nobody else. And that lost our identity. We then became their identity. You don't see me. You don't know me. Even though the name on the truck, same name is on your truck. I'm going. Yeah, you the, can handle whatever situation you got yourself into. And sometimes people cannot handle the predicament that they're in. Exactly. I know some people who do not carry any tools on their truck because this ain't none of my truck. This is a company truck. I'm a company driver. And if something needs to be fixed, they will send somebody out here to fix it. Brother, man, I, yo, I, I gotta admit, I gotta admit, bro. I'm, I, I'm such, I'm such that driver, man. I was just, I, you know, I broke down about uh, a day or two ago. And uh, come to find out that it was uh, it was something minor. You know, it was inside the truck. I flipped the switch, and boom, there it is. I'm back on the road. But I am I am that such a such of a driver that that I am company. The co- you know I call for roadside or call the company for roadside, and just wait for that company to to come and fix their truck. Now I will feel some different. Some you know something different that if it was my truck, then yeah, I'm going to try to rectify the problem if I can. You know, okay. try to save, I'm, try to save money and and I'm, stuff I'm gonna, like I'm that. Gonna give you, I'm going to give you a quick scenario, okay? Okay. Company okay. driver on operator, same okay. exact problem. Okay. It's a fuse. Right. Right. Company driver sits there on the shoulder of the road for four mm-hmm. hours because the service tech is on another call. Right, right. Four hours, your clock is tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Right, okay. right. I, 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 think I'm, I, I think I see where you're going with this, but go ahead. Okay, on operator, exact mm-hmm. same truck, exact same problem. Y'all both work for Swift. Mm-hmm. On operator gets out there, starts looking around, find out he blew a fuse. Change okay. the fuse. Right. You got a hundred mile run, you you've gone made that drop, they're gonna reload you where you just dropped off at, and you're coming right back to where you rode at originally. So the on operator has done two hundred mile run, mm-hmm. two different loads, while the company driver sits on the shoulder of the road. Now, now I, I want to I, I want to throw a monkey wrench in that. Now, the owner operator that got out and and saw the problem and he was able to he was able to rectify it, but the company driver could have done the same thing, but don't have the fuse to rectify. Hold up, okay. in your DOT book, 
we call it the Bible, the little green regulation book. Mm -hmm. If you pull that book out, it says you must carry spare fuses on you at all times. So, company driver not, is supposed but, to have those fuses, right? But not, but not every, but not every company, but not every company sets wait that driver wait, up. Be, 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 it's not, it's not the company's responsibility to set that driver up. It is. You, wait, 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 wait! You, 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 you think so? I mean, it's the company yeah. truck. They should. No, set the driver. No. They should set the driver up. Not with, not with like you know, Wait. like the tools, like like the tools and all like that. But, but it set the driver up with. As, it is your responsibility as the operator of that vehicle to carry spare fuses. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I mean, you know, I, you know, hey, now, now that I know the the actually actually the truck I'm in. Uh, the truck I'm in, they got like these button fuses on top. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know about that. I'm in the, I'm in the 16 uh, Pro Star, but I'll be coming up out this motherfucker because of the mirror gone. But um, I right now I'm in the 16 Pro Star, and the fuses that's in there that that you can glide, they push button. It's like it's like the fuses in a house, like. If a fuse pop, you just push that motherfucker back in, and and we good to go. Circuit so, breakers. yeah, 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 yeah. Circuit breakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. But, but the I, thing I, is, you're I, supposed to have those. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, we supposed to, we we supposed to. I, you know, I get it, Peter. Don't wait, get me wrong. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take you somewhere now. You want to go there, so we got to go there. Okay. You just said, as a company driver, you don't want to carry this. DOT says you're supposed to carry this. No, 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 no. I did not. Wait, I did not say I didn't want to carry it. I said that the company don't provide you it. And I didn't think that if, you know, you said it was the driver's responsibility. Yes. I said that it's the company responsibility because being, you know, if you're a new driver, like brand new driver, like fresh oh, yeah. out you of school, make mistakes. You're, you're not you gonna ain't going to know, you, you're not going to know what, you're not going to know what these fuels do right. what and go where. Now, now let's, let, let, let's, let's go to another side of the subject. When you're a new driver and you're in training, a good trainer will tell you, you need to have this. Uh, you're right. A good trainer would. But, but how many good? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Hit, with the, hit, the, hit the butt. How many? <laughs> how, how many? How many people mm -hmm. go under the name trainer that's not even trained themselves? Exactly. Exactly. So again, again, you know, don't want to, you know, keep on it, but again, I I get it. I, I get it. You know, owner operator that been in the game for 20 years, you know, know the ins and outs of his truck. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you do. You take the time to study your truck, especially if it's a if it's a truck that you are buying. You know what I'm saying? If you lease purchasing a truck or buying the truck, take the time to learn the truck. The truck. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But as far as a company driver, you know, it's it's always go, 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 go. Truck break down, truck break down, you you gotta, you know. You 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 got to call the company, and 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 the company will send somebody out there. Sometimes, if even even the company truck, some companies don't want you to fuck with their truck. You know, but the, even though you have the fuses, and the company does not want you to use your fuse, they will send somebody out there to you. Okay, you you're gonna have That's to go fine. by what the company say. 
That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's company policy. Right. But when you get right. DOT inspected, that officer has the right to ask you for your spare fuses. Well, I I tell you what, I I I guess I I salute to the DOT officers that pulled me over because I never had none. I mean, I I, and, I never had none. I when you, so salute, when you get rolled up them. for it, yeah, when you get rolled up for it, most I, people are gonna say, "Well, right, right, now, right, now, right, now, right now, right now, right now, I'm I'm knocking on wood slash plastic over here, so." Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, I'm not going to. Hopefully, I won't be that driver. But like I said, the fuses, fuses in this truck, you know, I'm about to I'm about to bounce back into my old truck. You know, I'll go in, uh, and make sure that, you know, see what type of fuses I need in there and have them to set me up with it. But as of right now, the fuses in this truck are circuit breakers. So. Mm hmm. But man, listen, 20 years in the game, man. Uh we 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 talked about, you know, we talked about your loss back in the day. Take take me back in the day where where the money was good. When the money was good back in the day. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. A know, little bit. When I first started, I started in car hauling. Um my trainer uh or the owner of the company I will never forget this. We were at the Petro in Bordentown, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know what was going on. I just know, hey, I'm here. To, I got a job. Right. Um, Mitch and Tommy was sitting there and they're ordering dinner. I had no money. So I'm thinking all I got is my wife gave me like 20 bucks, you know, to to basically live off of. And he goes, don't worry about it. I got you. Okay. When the owner of the company and the and your trainer is sitting there eating porterhouse steaks. Mm. That sounds good. I need, some, <laughs> I, I need some of that. I need some of that life. I, I need something. I need some of that in my life right now. Like I said, Dave, like I said, Tess's Roadhouse, here I come. I'm coming. <laughs> but, yeah, they... Porterhouse steaks, medium rare, you know, baked potatoes, salad. So, hey, I have what they have, it, man. When it comes time to pay the bill, the owner's like, hey, don't worry about it. I got you. Mm -hmm. uh, when you find out how much that bill is, you're like, oh, crap. But, yeah, it's taking out your check on Friday. <clears throat> oh, okay. So the, so the company would. So in other words, the company will take care of you at the time, but you gotta you gotta pay that money back, though. You gotta pay that <laughs> money back. But how? But how was the? You know the. But how was the money though? I mean, you know, you got companies over here bringing drivers in for like thirty thirty six cent a mile. You got them coming in. I at, was coming at, home at, with six hundred dollars a week, and this was in um, about two thousand seven, two thousand six. You know, coming home with six, seven hundred dollars a week, and I'm actually riding with someone. I know people now out here driving trainers or even out, out on their own, and they're coming home with three and four hundred dollars a week. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. But now, like I said, you know, back then, back back then, it, money was a little bit better. And actually, they, you know, back then, they actually considered truck drivers as, you know, as almost a one percenter. We was, uh, you know, they was up there with with, with damn near on par with, the, you know, with the respect of the, mili uh, of the military. But, uh, that and you, know, you know, but now we we don't even we, we don't even get that. Type of but see, your 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 outside cost was cheaper now. Unfortunately, if you stay on the hamster wheel of life, you will always never have enough. You never have enough. You okay. Pay check pay it's check. because you're on the hamster wheel of life. Okay. Okay. Now, how do you get off 
of that hamster wheel. First, you got to realize what your hamster wheel looks like. Okay. 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 Uh, prime example, most people, let's just say in their mid-20s to 30s, 30s to 40s, mm-hmm. renting a, a place to stay, mm-hmm. they got a car payment, mm-hmm. okay, four or five kids, mm-hmm. everything is debt, 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 debt. Okay. Yeah, because that's, that's, that, it sounds about It sounds about right. It sounds about that right. is what you're told. That is what you're taught. That's what everyone else does. Yeah, when you go to college, now, you know, it, when you go to college, they they got all them all them credit applications for the college kids and all like that. Yeah, that's how yep. it starts. It, it starts okay. right there. If if you know that I get a car that I can pay for, I don't care if it's only three thousand dollars. $3,000 and that car is paid off. 90% of the time, you're not driving your personal vehicle because you're away from home. You're in that commercial vehicle. Right. That commercial vehicle. So is instead your of having vehicle. a $300, $400 a month bill, this is paid off. Mm-hmm. Instead of buying that house in the subdivision that just got built, Mm-hmm. When you can go into the old neighborhood and get a house in the old neighborhood that you can pay for. Now hold on. Now now hold on. Let me let's, let me, let me let me throw some shade in that in that old neighborhood. That old neighborhood might not be all that gravy no more. You know what I'm saying? That would probably wait, wait. that probably might have been the reason why you moved out of the old neighborhood in the first place. You moved out saying. of you moved out of one old neighborhood, but there's other neighborhoods that you can move into. Right, right. That's that's true. That's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, I got you. But got you. you get that that you can pay for. So by the time you're fifty years old, my house is paid for, my car is paid for, my kids' college education is paid for. Mm-hmm. And I'm fifty years old. For the next ten years, from be- between fifty to sixty, I'm it should able to be all profit. My money, you yeah, bank that money for ten years. Yeah, it when should be all profit. I'm done. I'm going to retire. You, You're you, now. You should be able to live off that American bank. dream again. Yeah, you should be able to. You should be able to live off that bank. But how many? But how? How many of us out here though that actually follows that program? I mean, because I, it's just because it's. It's like because you they're know, on that hamster wheel. I, Get I, off I agree. Hamster wheel. I agree. I agree, and that's and that's exactly what I got. That's exactly what I got to do. I got to. I myself got to get off that hamster because I'm I'm still on it. <laughs> I am still on it. Man. It's easy. It's easy to get on that hamster wheel, especially when someone says, "We'll give you a credit card." Mm-hmm. And a person, what? and a person got like, and a person got like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten credit cards with 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 balances on there. You know what I'm saying? I I was I was I, I I fell into the credit card trap back in the day. That's why I got that's why I got four <laughs> four five bankruptcies because I I fell in the credit card trap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know I I build up I build up my credit. Uh, I build up my credit and then I tore it back down. I build it back up and then I tore it back down. Then I build have it back ever, up. Have you, so, ha, have you ever realized there's one thing that we all do? Mm-hmm. We look at TV, we look at movies, mm-hmm. and we fantasize what it would be like to be like Wesley Snipes in the movie or to be like Denzel um, Washington. Wesley Denzel, Snipes probably yeah. probably might be a bad example, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but doing 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 the movies, they got all this money, they got all this fancy stuff. That's what we want. But the thing is, we don't look at the big picture. No, we don't. You can you look at well, that was a brand new house. Never say that you couldn't have a brand new house. Mm-hmm. But you get that old house that's paid for, you fix it up. 
you can sell that one and move into a better one. That one gets fixed up. You move into another one. So and when you finally move into your five bedroom, three bath, four car garage home, it's paid for. You know what? You know what, Peanut? I mean, you know, uh, time's almost up, man. But we, I mean, we we touch on we we touch on a lot, man. And you got you you got a lot you you got lots of jewels uh, to uh, to drop, man. And I I, I appreciate. I appreciate all of the little bits that uh that you just dropped on me today, man. Something something that I'm definitely gonna take and uh and apply to my life, especially after this epidemic, this you know, when things hopefully when things get back to normal and you know, all like that, you know, I I'm gonna I'm gonna try and uh implement, you know, implement some of the stuff that we just talked about here today. So I'm definitely gonna get up off that hamster wheel of life. I got a I got a few more questions. I, the one question that I definitely wanted to ask you, um, being you know from twenty years ago, man, do you think perfect? Do you think the professionality of the truck driver had diminished over the years? Oh yeah, yeah, because it goes back to training. It goes back to what co- it goes back to corporate America. Corporate America has taken over America. And when they took over America, they took over every aspect. They want to tell a driver, here, here's a logbook or here's an e-log. All you do is go from point A to point B. That's all you, you don't need to think. Tell you what, we're going to make it even better for you. We're going to give you an automatic truck. You don't even have to know how to change gears anymore. The truck will change gears for you. Oh, that's not working? Great. We'll give you a truck that will drive itself. Mm. This 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 dude dropping some serious bombs. Right here. I mean, and that's and that's exactly what's going on. That's that's exactly what's going on, man. You know these these people that's coming out uh, coming out of school with auto restrictions, and a lot of companies is flipping over from from manuals to automatics. Yeah, they they making it they making it easy. They make it easy in, for us, but the, but the, you know what? I'm a, I want to say this. I want to say this that I just thought about. They making it easy for us because of the truck driver shortage. Debate me on that. No, no. Wait, 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 wait. Stop that lie right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is no truck driver shortage. You want to know there's, why? There's there's no truck driver shortage. Why? Because if there's a truck driver shortage, back in World War II, there was a shortage of people in the military. They automatically kicked in the draft. People started getting drafted and sent to the military. The military all of a sudden had enough people to go to war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? If there was a shortage of truck drivers, don't you think they would make a way to put more drivers on the road? Bruh. I I hear you, I hear you, I, I hear you, and I agree. I agree. Now I'm just going by what I'm. I'm just going by what they saying statistically. Did I say that? <laughs> there again, the statistics does what? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, bro. Hey, I I appreciate you coming on the podcast, man. Uh, you got a you 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 yourself got a got a internet radio. You you wanna you wanna you wanna promote yeah. that right quick? What's what's uh, yeah. what's what what's the website or the or the uh, or the www. Uh, wait it wait that's the, wait wait that's too much. What what is it? Live three sixty five. Live three six five. That's the Live yes. 365 app. Okay. No, oh, not, live th- not the Live 365 app. All right, radio. Right, on live 365, yeah. Okay, what it, else? It, it, the, the station is DRV D- 103, R- which stands for Drive 103. Drive 103. Here we go. Live internet radio Drive 103. And this DRV. is... Uh, uh, this is this the radio. Oh, there's a little play button right there. 
Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, I gotta I gotta stop that from playing because you know YouTube will probably be monetized. But uh but this is uh but this is a radio station that you started and yeah. and you uh you said this is this is what, twenty four twenty four seven, no no commercial no commercial no breaks. Commercials. Yeah. We we basically it's all about the music. Um I've had too many drivers who cannot stay awake at night or during the okay. day they don't have one, no one to talk to right. we all have our little um playlist on our phones mm-hmm. and what normally happens is you have what you like 24 7 on your playlist okay. and after okay. a while mentally you get tired of hearing your own music. Yeah, the same same thing. So you got so, so you, you set this up. Sleep. You will get sleepy. So you set this up for the drivers to have something uh have a have a various uh various amount of music sound you know I when I popped in it was hip hop. So you got hip hop, yeah. country, so you got a mixture country, of everything rock. for everybody. Yeah. We got some Mikey Priest. Okay. Yeah, Maxi Priest. God damn it man. We we going back. Yeah. All right, y'all. So check out this. Uh, I got it right here. It's up. You know, it's uh, live three sixty five dot com station drive one hundred three. Yes, sir. For the truck driver, that it keep and you up I at night. The host. I am the host of the morning drive. Yes, sir. He is the host. All right. So also, um, what about you? You still, uh, you still active in Zello? You know, I've been away from Zello yeah. for so long, but you, yeah, you still I, active? I still, my, I still stick my head on Zello. Oh, okay, and, okay. Uh, it's still right. in the same, in still in the, still in the same, uh, in the same channels. Uh, what, what's yeah. that? Yeah, truck, I, I, truck yeah, talking, I, chill. I, I still pop, yeah, I still uh, pop it. But what okay. I was gonna say about the radio station and my, the morning show. Mm-hmm. It's the only one, and I repeat, the only one in the country, the morning drive. Mm-hmm. Why? It's because it's while I'm going down the road, you can follow me. Mm-hmm. Every other morning drive in America is done from a studio. My morning drive is actually being done on the road. Oh, okay, that's what's up, man. And it's part of the it's part of that three sixty that uh 365 app it, it, you know i i'll probably i you know that's one that's one of the topics that i really haven't touched on um the 365 app so i will probably touch on that in a later podcast you know to let you if you guys familiar with it or unfamiliar with it i'll come and uh chop it up if somebody is familiar with the 365 app definitely come on like out me podcast at gmail.com and uh, let's talk, you know, chalk it up. I mean, talk, chop it up about it. it. It became much more apparent in in the trucking world because of a whole lot of whole lot of situations that went on in the past. Uh, when I was in the Zello group, you know, we had several groups that I was in. Uh, uh, so many groups I was in, I can't remember remember them all, but I'm not in them no more for several for obvious reasons. But uh, but um, but at that time we tried to come together, you know, so we can figure out how to keep us safe out here. You know what I'm saying? And that's another topic that uh, that, you know, that we're out of time. But you know, that's another topic we can uh, we can touch on at a at a later date. You know, so definitely inspect the inspect another podcast with me and my man Captain Peanut right here. You know, we'll probably you know we'll probably go delve a little bit deeper into these uh into you know these uh apps that can help truck drivers stay safe you know help a truck driver ping another truck driver if he needs help or whatever you know all like that and maybe we can touch on some of the zello channels that that uh that we well that he's in and that i was in so on that note captain peanut brother man brother man brother man thank you for coming on to the show Chopping it up with me. And as, as I say in parking, keep the sunny side up, the rubber side down. Keep it between the mustard and mayonnaise and catch you here next time. And on that and on that note, we are 
gone. Hey, man, thanks a lot for coming on, man. I appreciate it. And a lot of, you know, when uh, when we get back together, man, we we still got we still got lots to talk about, bro. We still got lots right. to talk about. All right. Well, check out check out. You got the station now, so you can you can always tune in. I'm on from seven in the morning to noon, and my boy Bruce runs seven p.m. to midnight. 